Hi, I'm Jennifer Garcia, Event Director for the 52nd Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. We're excited you'll be joining us this year and we have prepared this video briefing to point out the most important items contained in the operations manual for rules and regulations. While you'll gain a lot of information from this video, there is even more important information in the manual. Please take the time to read and understand it. It is available online now, so you don't have to wait for registration to start. And when you get to registration, pay special attention to the red envelope. It contains the most important documents, including the documents requiring signatures. Before we get into the details, I want to take a moment and introduce you to our new pilot coordinator, Miranda Portillo. Hi everyone, I'm excited to be working with all of you for the 2024 Balloon Fiesta. If you have any questions or issues regarding your participation, please reach out to me. If you need me during the event, I'll be in the Sid Cutter Pilots Pavilion. I'm looking forward to meeting all of you soon. Now on to the briefing, starting with the FAA waiver. Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to Balloon Fiesta. The FAA Certificate of Waiver extends 25 nautical miles from the Albuquerque VOR bounded by the 320 radial and extending clockwise to the 190 radial from the surface to 9400 feet MSL. There will be a TFR or temporary flight restriction in place during each session that extends four nautical miles from Balloon Fiesta Park from the surface up to 8000 feet MSL. Flight above the waiver and the TFR is permitted under 14 CFR Part 91. The waiver has weather limitations on our flight operations, which includes surface winds not exceeding 10 knots, visibilities of at least three statute miles, and a ceiling of at least 1,500 feet. The waiver is not permission to ignore any of the federal regulations. In fact, there are really only two sections in the regulations that are waived. The first allows hot air balloons to operate in Albuquerque's Class C airspace without an ADSB output unit and in some cases without communication with the air traffic control tower at the Albuquerque airport. This is only during the hours of the Balloon Fiesta waiver. The waiver allows pilots to fly their balloons as low as 500 feet AGL over congested areas when inside the 25 mile waiver area. But remember, this is only during Balloon Fiesta session hours, which are typically 6 to 10 a.m. The waiver is not in effect outside these hours. Let's talk specifically about the minimum safe altitudes around Balloon Fiesta Park. Directly over the launch field, there is a minimum safe altitude of 75 AGL. How high is 75 AGL? Look to the four corners of the launch field. We will have 75 foot tall pylons inflated. Your basket must be above them when you are flying over the launch field. Your pilot map identifies this area in light green. And let me point out that dropping into the Royal or concrete ditch on the west side of the field would be a violation of the 75 foot minimum safe altitude rule. And if we're still launching balloons, the minimum safe altitude is 500 feet AGL for those of you boxing back over the field. Surrounding three sides of that light green area on the map is a hatched green area. This corridor is bounded by Edith on the west, Jefferson on the east, and Osuna on the south. The minimum safe altitude in this area is 200 feet AGL. However, there are a couple of yellow zones within that corridor to be aware of. And while you're transitioning from the light green of the field to the hatched area and beyond, keep your ascent and descent rates at 200 feet per minute or less. These minimum safe altitudes are on the test. If you're unclear about them, get out the map, rewind the video, and review this information. While we're on the map, let me point out a few other key areas to be aware of. First off, check out the color coding. The different shades of red and pink are minimum altitudes, either in AGL or MSL. An example would be the propane refueling area in the northwest corner of the park. Its number is 112 in light pink and has a minimum altitude of 5,300 feet MSL or 200 feet AGL. Yellow indicates a landing and takeoff prohibited area. An example here is the fireworks area, just east of the propane area, number 202, 
Again, yellow means no landing or takeoffs in that area. There's a lot of other colors and shading and borders to indicate different features like schools, parks, golf courses, etc. Of course, airspace boundaries around the airports are marked with the same indications you would see on a sectional chart. And then there's the color purple. It's a landing only zone and there's a huge one just north of Balloon Fiesta Park. I'm Nancy Wirtz, Chief of the Landowner Relations Team. Our team is here to help you and your crew with any interactions, either positive or negative, that you might have with local landowners. That big purple area that Henry just mentioned is Sandia Pueblo property. You can land on Sandia Pueblo, but you cannot launch again. And all paved roads, including the space between Highway 313 and the railroad tracks, are considered a no takeoff and no landing zone or a yellow zone throughout the Sandia Pueblo property. While the majority of Sandia Pueblo is marked purple on your map to remind you to fly at least 200 feet AGL, there are two red zones in there as well. Numbers 103 and 104, the village itself and Sandia Resort. The Pueblo governor has asked us to refrain from taking pictures in and around the village in order to respect the privacy and the heritage of the residents. Both areas have a minimum altitude listed. Over the purple area, please maintain 200 feet AGL. If you're lower than that, the Pueblo officers think that you're going to land and will dispatch to come to your assistance. This takes time away from assisting those balloons that have actually landed. If you land on Sandia Pueblo, please be courteous and patient. Their public safety resources are very limited. Review the operations manual with your crew for the proper procedure to recover your balloon from Sandia Pueblo before you fly in that direction. It includes completing a form that is found in your operating manual. Balloon Fiesta works year-round to maintain and improve relations with Sandia, and it's important that you help us maintain that relationship. While Sandia Pueblo may be the largest sensitive area, every place you land or take off from is owned by someone else. Make sure you and your crew are familiar with the PZ map and the locations of all of those sensitive and prohibited areas. Your crew can provide guidance from the ground to avoid those sensitive areas. The Landowner Committee continues to work with landowners to provide red, yellow, and white sheets to help identify landing or no landing sites for pilots. If you see a red sheet, this designates a red PZ. Keep a minimum altitude. A yellow sheet represents a yellow PZ. Don't land or take off from there. See a white sheet or an X? It's a friendly landowner who will welcome you to launch or to land on their property. You know that we take off and land on someone else's property nearly 100% of our flights. You and your crew need to remember that and be respectful and courteous to the landowner. In addition, please attempt to reach out to the landowner and give them a landing card. You'll find them in your pack. It gives you an opportunity to thank the landowner for allowing you to land on their property. After they fill it out, bring it back to the Sid Cutter Pavilion and turn it in, putting the landowner in for a daily drawing for some prizes. If the landowner isn't at home, leave the card. Again, you'll find these cards in your pilot pack. We think this outreach effort on the part of every Balloon Fiesta pilot will go a long way towards increasing the available landing areas around the Albuquerque area. You may be the only balloon crew the landowner encounters during the event. It's the responsibility of you and your crew to make a positive interaction. Do the right thing for the entire ballooning community. If you need any help or advice in dealing with a landowner, please call us. One more thing about flying in the Albuquerque area. On those days when the surface winds are not conducive for landing in the city, don't forget there are plenty of wide open areas south of town and south of the airport. If you are heading south and need to overfly the airport, the waiver allows you to do this in one of two ways. If you are east of I-25 and unable to land prior to Central Avenue, you must climb to at least 8,000 feet MSL and overfly the airport. You may start your descent from 8,000 feet once you have reached the southern airport boundary fence. 
If you're west of I-25 and unable to land prior to Central Avenue, you must be at or below 6,000 feet MSL until you reach the area where I-25 curves and crosses the river. If you are unable to comply with any of these altitude requirements, you must contact the Albuquerque Tower on 120.3. Kirtland Air Force Base shares the runways at the Albuquerque International Airport and controls much of the land around the airport. Base officials have implemented stricter security policies this year, meaning if you land there, be prepared to spend the better part of the day retrieving your balloon. And that airport on the west side of Albuquerque, KAEG, Double Eagle Airport, it is not exempt from any communication rules. If you get near that Class D airspace, you need to talk to ATC. And to wrap up this section on maps, they are available in both paper and numerous electronic format. So there's no excuse for you not knowing what's out there for takeoffs and for landing areas. The PZs and the maps will be updated as necessary throughout Balloon Fiesta. Listen up for changes at the pilot briefing and keep your electronic maps up to date. Speaking of electronic maps or moving maps, I highly recommend you fly with one. It provides little doubt as to where you are at all times. Just don't let the moving map distract you from flying the balloon. Hi everyone, I'm Michelle Healy, Chief Launch Official. The mission of the launch directors is to ensure a safe and coordinated launch. We'll be communicating with you, the pilots, throughout the process and with each launch director responsible for approximately 10 to 15 balloon launches each session, you can help us by using a three-row rule. Here's my assistant, Chris Padilla, to explain. Simply put, the three-row rule means that you need to be looking downwind three rows and following their lead. When they go cold, you should be ready to go cold. When they stand up, you should be ready to stand up. But remember, downwind isn't always to the south. It could be to the north, east, or west. You will have already communicated a couple times with your launch director prior to this point. But now that you have stood up your balloon, what happens? So when we walk you out, we'll have our thumbs tucked and we'll do a motion to pull you towards us. If you have traffic, we'll point out the traffic. We'll have a thumb down to tell you not to leave yet. And then if it's clear to leave, thumbs up. So when we want to check to see if you're buoyant, we'll give you a thumbs down and we'll ask you to bounce with us. There's many different ways. Some people will just point at you and ask you to bounce. When it's time to launch, we'll go to thumbs up. So at any time, we may give you the signal for this. That'll mean either cut your fan or we've heard something on the radio to tell us to shut it down. Always take a few minutes to review your checklist before you launch. Once you're in the air, you need to be flying your balloon. And notice the field altitude when you set your altimeter. It's 5,073 feet or 1,546 meters MSL. This nearly mile high elevation will be a factor in your aircraft's performance. And have the launch slip easily available. You don't need to be scrambling to find it when it's time to launch. Finally, all pilots must have a working aircraft radio capable of transmitting and receiving aircraft frequencies on board at all times. Turn it on before you launch. Most days the winds cooperate with a north to south direction and we start launching downwind or from the south and middle of the field and work our way north. But if it shifts during the launch, the launch directors will switch areas to change the order of the launch. That means you could be standing up thinking you're next in line when the launch director skips right past you to another balloon. On competition days, if you are assigned a launch site within the competition area, you'll have a time that you will need to be up and away. The time will be announced at the pilot's briefing. If you can't inflate and launch by that time, you'll be required to move to a launch site outside of the scoring area. A launch director will help with this. Again, this is only on competition days for those assigned a launch site within the competition area. Let's have a safe and coordinated launch every day. And to help you remember and stay up to date on the ever-changing information, we have a mandatory 6 a.m. pilot briefing every morning. At these briefings, you'll receive updated weather, PZs, a reminder of the schedule of the day's events, and other important information. Glow briefings are now scheduled at 5.45 p.m. Special shaped glow briefings will take place in the Sid Cutter Pavilion. Regular shaped glows will brief at the pilot tower like morning briefings. We'll continue to use our electronic sign-in or scanning system. It's really simple and it works well. Your pilot badge will have a QR code on it. 
When you arrive for briefing, you'll look for someone in a bright neon vest and show them your badge. They will scan the code. The scan will record in the database your attendance, the date and time of the scan, and let you and the official know if there is a message for you. If you are late to the pilot briefing, you can still get scanned until the briefing ends. Once the briefing ends, the scanning will stop and you'll have to see a safety official to get a briefing in order to participate in that session. In addition to the mandatory pilot briefing at the beginning of each session, there are other ways we will be providing information to you. You can and will get information from your launch director at your launch site. We'll use the Remind text messaging system as well. If you haven't yet signed up to receive these messages via Remind, please contact us directly so we can be sure to get you in the system. Unfortunately, only pilots and crew chiefs can sign up to receive the Remind messages. Balloon Fiesta does provide a way for other crew members and the general public to get text messages. While timely, they are not specific to flight operations. Another means of communicating with the pilots and crew members is through the Balloon Meister's frequency, where we will be providing updated information from the tower during the flight times. It's the Fiesta Channel number 1 or 456.8125. Don't worry about writing it down now. It's on the important numbers page in the operations manual. Hi everyone, I'm Brad T. Meyer and I'm looking forward to providing you with great weather information again this year. As you probably already know, Albuquerque's weather is characterized by a unique set of microclimates driven by the diverse terrain. Some of the typical weather patterns you can expect to encounter while flying in the Albuquerque area include a north to south drainage wind from a few hours before sunrise until a couple hours after sunrise. On many days, there will be a south to southeast wind above this drainage level. This is what provides the box winds allowing you to come back over the field. Without a box pattern, those drainage winds tend to blow towards the southwest portion and over the city. The mountains to the east and the river to the west of the field drive the wind speed and direction absent of any weather systems coming through the area. One other thing to keep in mind is that thermals do tend to start to develop a couple hours after sunrise. Be conscious of this time frame and find a nice landing spot before it gets too late in the morning. For glows, we usually see afternoon breezes from the south calming down right about sunset. In addition to the information we'll provide at all the briefings, we'll also be updating the weather information throughout the flight window on the Balloon Fiesta radio weather loop. The frequency is listed with the phone numbers and other contact information in the operations manual. Program it into your aircraft radio so that you can easily access the information during your flight. We have also created a list of local personal weather stations in the area that can be viewed online or through the Balloon Fiesta app. Check them out and either bookmark them or download the app to have quick access to that weather as well. Finally, remember our experienced staff is here to provide you with specialized local weather forecast information before and during the flights, as well as prior to the evening glows. If you have any weather related questions, please don't hesitate to ask any member of the weather team. I wanna emphasize the final decision to make a flight is always up to you, the pilot in command. We will provide you with the most accurate and up-to-date information on weather and other conditions so that you can make a solid go, no-go decision. We will not pressure you to make a flight that you feel is not safe or necessary. That said, remember, you must have a thumbs up from a launch director to make a flight from the field. Balloon Fiesta is pleased to provide propane for your flights and glows, and even for those that participate in Albuquerque Aloft. Let's review the traffic pattern and refueling procedures. The entrance to the refueling line is from West Wind, which is the farthest west road on the launch field. Travel north through gate 28 and follow the signs. It's at this point you'll turn in your waiver and get it scanned. Before arriving at the propane checkpoint, make sure that all your strikers are removed from your basket and your nylon jackets are removed. All flags need to be put away and all electronic devices, including cell phones, need to be turned off. 
Pickup trucks and open trailers must have their tailgates lowered during refueling. Baskets must be removed from vans, pickups with caps or toppers, and enclosed trailers to the extent that the venting of tanks and the people refueling are outside the enclosure. As always, propane refueling is available daily from 9 a.m. until noon for the morning sessions and immediately after the fireworks for the glow nights. We mentioned the traffic congestion in the air, but you and your crew will experience traffic congestion on the ground as well. Spectators are allowed and encouraged to be out and among the balloons during the event. So please remember when you or your crew are driving across the field, watch your speed and be extra cautious. I recommend putting a crew person out in front of your vehicle as you move through the crowd to exit the field. Remind your crew that a balloon chase vehicle has no extra rights on the roads not even here in the balloon capital of the world. Pilots, please instruct your crew to drive defensively and safely. In particular, the city of Albuquerque prohibits the use of cell phones, including texting, unless it's a hands-free device. It's also illegal for anyone under the age of 18 to ride in the back of a pickup truck. Remember that during the week, school will be in session and the city is particularly sensitive to speeding in school zones. So watch your speed in those areas. Speaking of traffic, be advised, the police turn Alameda, the main street to the south of Bloom Fiesta Park, into a one-way outbound only street for a short period of time at the end of weekend morning sessions. No through traffic is allowed as all lanes are used to allow spectators to leave the field. This means if you're coming back to the field from the west on Alameda, you might be prevented from continuing east once you get to 2nd Street you'll want to consider using the north entrance to the field after your flight. Balloon Fiesta staff have worked hard to separate the balloon truck traffic from the public traffic. Follow the directions on the back of your balloon truck parking pass to get to the field. Do not follow the instructions for general parking. Longtime Albuquerque pilot and part 141 flight school owner, Beth Wright Smith has put together some tips for those of you new to flying in Albuquerque. She includes tips on getting to the park and avoiding the general public traffic. We think the video is great viewing for everyone, whether you've never flown in Albuquerque, always fly there, or just haven't been to Albuquerque in a couple of years. It also has information about some logistics that we can't fit into this video. It's available for viewing during registration and online. Thanks team. Here are a couple of closing reminders. The RC balloons we call Globitos are back. They'll be sharing the field on Sunday, Wednesday, Friday, and the Saturday evening sessions. Quad A will hold its annual safety seminar on Tuesday afternoon. Register now online. And the FAA will hold its mini seminars from 11 to 12 on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. This year, the seminars will be held in the group tours tent. Finally, Rainbow Riders remains the official ride concessionaire for Balloon Fiesta. As noted in the ops manual, Commercial balloon rides are prohibited within Balloon Fiesta airspace unless you are part of the Rainbow Riders team. Thanks for your attention, cooperation, and participation in the 52nd Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. With your help, it will be the best and safest ever.